Hello there. Once again, this is Anton from Anton Bay, and I am a big fan of Malibu Comics Ultraverse. And what I wanted to do is I've I've touched on a few of these series, but I wanted to look at the entire Ultraverse universe in one video just to kind of grasp the entire scope of it. The series lasted two years. Um, these were some of the first titles that came out. I'm just going to start going through them. Uh, Prime here, a uh, 15-year-old boy, I believe, was 15, who basically grows this gross exo-like shell of flesh and becomes Prime. So there you have a very awkward superhero. Um, Hard Case, one of my favorite heroes from the, the whole series. His origins and all that stuff, he's the oldest of all of them uh, that are the heroes of the stories takes place, he's he's basically, he was a hero before there was an Ultraverse. Um, and The Strangers, which is an interesting book, um, was just a whole cable car full of people, uh, 58 people or something like that, I believe it was, on a, on a cable car. They got struck by a mysterious alien lightning and gave every single person on that cable car superpowers. And some of them joined up and made a team. And it's just a weird hodgepodge of characters and people. And we, we get a lot of villains out of that cable car accident as well. So it's a cool concept, what they did. Um, Prime kind of starts off slow um, as he learns his powers and everything like that. Hard Case also. The series is don't just like immediately blast into tons of stuff going on. Um, they kind of build slow and they do character development the first several issues until uh, I want to say it was like issue five or six and then they all start crossing over and that's where it gets I think more impressive and as far as the art goes I think the art is pretty good. But you can see right here, this is our issue number four. Hard Case is already doing a crossover with the Strangers. The strangers are, of course, ready to do a crossover with Hard Case. And this was one of the series, or one of the whole company's downfalls, was that it got really hard to follow because you had to like cross over all the time. There was always a crossover going on. And it made it really hard to just follow basic comic book plots. I think Hard Case, in my opinion, has some of the strongest art in the in the whole Ultraverse. Um, Strangers is a great book. And after issue six here, this is what I was talking about. Um, it does a breakthrough every series. Every series has this crossover breakthrough every single title that they have going on crosses over with each other in a giant battle on the moon and then all the series is kind of go back to um just just regular kind of you can jump on now is in fact that was their tagline um jump on now because it's it's now it's a good time to start following if you miss the first six issues now it's time to get on board but it was still kind of a mess to try and figure everything out. And this is one of the things that I think made it hard for the company, but also made it really fun for me as a collector after the fact was, you know what, I, I can't just have hard case. I have to track down every issue of The Strangers. I have to get every issue of Prime. I have to get every issue of this. I have to get the crossovers of that. And it's really daunting if the series is just continue, and if there were 60 years worth of this stuff, it wouldn't be any big deal. You would just kind of ignore it, most likely. But this series only ran, the whole universe only existed for two years, which meant it was attainable. I could actually get every issue of this if I just apply the time, and I did, and I have picked up almost every single issue from the entire comic book series.
I, I absolutely love some of these hard case covers. Um, Strangers, pretty good, but they almost look kind of marvelly at times. Not that that's bad, of course, but I think a lot of uh, Ultraverse comics definitely had an Ultraverse look to them. And so anytime they started to look marvelly, it just seemed kind of odd. You got Prime 15 with Turbo Charge. Um, one of one of the greatest comic book villains, in my opinion, Enemy. Just a big giant uh, nano mechanized entity. Pain in the ass. Can't kill it. It's an asshole. It's great. It's it's like I said. It's it's. One, it, he fights the thing for three issues straight, and it's one of the best stories. Um, there is one issue of Strangers missing. I, I'm missing issue 17. It happens. There is a few gaps in this entire run, but not many. So Prime ran 26 issues. Um, Hard Case ran 26 issues. I want to say The Strangers ran 25 or 26 issues. I don't have every issue of, of The Strangers. I do have every issue of Prime, have every issue of Hard Case. And this is after he gets all deformed. He actually starts wearing this ridiculous mask. Um, yeah, The Strangers, uh, one of their team members betrays them. And so their team gets like blown apart in a pretty good story and it's kind of out of the blue it's unexpected because you're like wow I didn't I didn't see that coming so I thought that was a good good storyline to it here's where it starts to get weird because and there's Str strangers 24 uh, this is hard case number 23 it is not owned by Marvel yet but we have Loki we already have Loki intervening into the Ultraverse. We got Prime 25. Hard Case 24. Prime 26. Hard Case 25. And I recognize this artist. This is the final issue of Hard Case. Um, this guy did a lot of work on X-Men for Marvel. So I thought that was interesting. Now after... after um, Marvel bought out Ultraverse. You get some weirdness like this. Uh, you have Spider Prime, which is I don't I don't even know about that. That's crazy. Um, part of me is also really sad that uh, you know Marvel kind of trashed these characters and never did anything with them. But gosh, you have to admit this is a pretty cool, pretty cool Spider outfit, Spider Prime outfit. I love that. So this is series two of Prime. This is after Marvel owns it. It's pretty good. You get some pretty nice covers. And that's for a $1.50 cover price. That's a hell of a beautiful painting cover. And then you start getting like the prime and it's been done by the impulse artist and you can really see it because it's a full of speedsters too. It's like, what are you guys doing? More cover of prime by the impulse artist. I can't remember the dude's name. Uh, I can't read that small. Anyway, I remember because my brother used to read impulse at the time and I was like, this totally looks like impulse. Um, this is a great Prime cover. Gross and disgusting. Got a Prime double feature. A lot of these had flip books, so they had a thing on the back. Um, Power of Prime was a mini series, which I don't have all of. And I believe it is post Marvel. So I, I have a lot less of post um, 
you know, once once they were bought out by Marvel, I have less of those. Those are way harder to find. This is Prime Infinity. Uh, this would have been right at Black September when Malibu Comics was taken over and bought out by Marvel Comics. So I'm going to pull these down. And we're going to just take a quick look at Ultra Force. Mantra, which was another really strange, strange title, and probably what which was one of, if um, if Hard Case is one of my favorites, Nightman is going to be a close second. Nightman is a great comic book. It was actually made into a TV series, but Ultra Force actually got a cartoon. This was like their version of the Avengers. It took all the different team members and put them all in one. <clears throat> I even appreciate this sticker on here. Dollar Days comic books, 39 cents each or three for one dollar. That is affixed right to the cover. Um, so this was your Avengers version of it. Mantra, <clears throat> sorry. Mantra was actually a man trapped in a woman's body. Uh, ancient old warrior stuck in a modern female's body with a kid. What a, what a, what an awkward storyline all the time. Um, Nightman was just a guy who got hit by the cable car. It rolled into his car and hit his car. So all he has for, for powers is the ability to hear evil, and that's messed up. This Nightman issue, this one's so disturbing. Um, this is a villain. Every part of him has been broken. And... He's trying to kill the kid that did all this to him. And when my, Nightman's trying to save the kid from this monster guy, the kid screams, break his collarbone. He hates that. And that is one of the most disturbing lines. And I'm just like, ugh. Anyway, this is definitely something you should read. Um, I've used that line in real life. Um, Usually it'll defuse a fight. If somebody's getting ready to fight, you say, oh, break his collarbone. He hates that. No, everybody's done. <laughs> That's, it's pretty messed up if you think about it. Um, there's Ultra Force 3. A lot of what happened in Ultra Force uh, actually took place in the cartoon series. There was a cartoon series, and that's pretty cool. There is the issue where Pix dies. I have pointed that out before. This is Nightman number three. This is when the Breakthrough series happened there. And that also kind of helps put everything together. Um, what's happening when? Mantra is on issue number five. Nightman is getting starting to get really good at this point. Mantra in her sixth issue. Everybody else, it happened in her seventh. Um, uh, the, the first tier books. Mantra happened the sixth issue, which means she started a month later. Her title was launched a month later, just like Nightman was launched um, five months later. But some of these issues of Nightman are the best. Um, the art is decent, but it is it is just killer killer stories. And Ultra Force, Ultra Force Infinity. I think at that point they're starting to get tied in with Marvel more. Got slightly out of sequence there. So we got Mantra number seven. Nightman number seven. That is a great Nightman cover. Um, this is the new Ultra Force. This is after Marvel bought it. Ultra Force only ran for 10 issues because it, it wasn't put together until I think a year into the series, a year into the universe. Mantra is a book that I am working on getting a full run. It has never happened so far. It is something I'm trying to make happen, but these, some of these books after Marvel bought them, these are very hard to find. Phoenix Resurrection. Yep, there was definitely some Phoenix going on in the <clears throat> post Malibu world, and they were getting a lot of Marvel stuff going on. We had a lot of, a lot of Phoenix interference because we needed a big powerful force. 
Mantra number 11. Nightman number 9 with Tech Knight. Mantra number 12. Nightman number 10. <clears throat> And after Marvel bought him out, uh, the Black Knight was a pretty permanent fixture in that group. This guy now, I used to see him as, as just a regular bad guy. Now when I look at him, all I see is Luchasaurus. So you have that. Got Ultra Force number six. Ultra 13. Nightman 12, Ultra Force 15. Ultra Force actually ran more issues in Marvel than it did in its original Malibu company. It just got canceled. So there is Ultra Force 9 with Black Knight. Sorry, I was trying to read that cover from the, the side there. And I know it's a sin. It's double bagged. I didn't do it. It's just in there. Forgive me. Answer number 15. Nightman 14. Where he actually comes across Rafferty. One of the cooler villains of the entire um, Malibu comics. <clears throat> Ultra Force. Ultraverse. I got a few of these. I have doubles of not many. Nightman number 15. Mantra 17. And yes, she gets pregnant. Or he gets pregnant, however you want to say that. It is a woman, but it's the spirit of a man trapped in her body. And she's actually, I mean, he took her body, so... <clears throat> I think eventually at the end of the series he gets free of her body and she gets to go back and raise her son but it is a weird weird twist you got Mantra versus Topaz and you have the full on actual Mantra versus Topaz and once again, we get some meddling going on with Loki. Loki makes an appearance in Nightman number 22. I think he's also there in episode number 23. I don't know why in the hell this one is double bag two. That's not good. Oh, that would be why, because I have copies of it. So, Nightman is one of the few issues that it doesn't get a series after Malibu gets bought out, but it does get Nightman versus Gambit, which is odd. They're not really characters that should really be together, but they do kind of work together. Um, you did get an all new Nightman, but I don't think it lasted very long. In fact, I can't remember. Hardly any issues of it at all. Black September, of course, took its toll on Nightman as well. Mantra was another series that lived on and I think actually got better after Marvel got a hold of it. At least a little bit. I mean, the writing is much more shallow, but something about it is fun and endearing and I do enjoy it. There was also the series uh, Necro Mantra, um, which I've only got a couple issues of. I wish I had more of it. Um, but it's like an evil version of regular Mantra. So that is that. And we are not yet through the Ultraverse universe. Uh, next up, we had Freaks which was about a bunch of kids that found out they had powers and they became like runaways. It was actually very similar to runaways. We had firearm, which is a guy who just didn't have any powers. Let me 
sort through here. And we had another book that I really appreciate, which was The Solution. Got a problem? Call The Solution. Good catchphrase. So Freaks was just a bunch of like high school kids that found out they had powers and were basically on the lam. They were government agencies trying to capture them. You know, their life was shit. Firearm was a guy who had no powers, yet still managed to keep up in a world full of superheroes. And the solution is about basically a team of people who pay for their superpowers. They just bought them, like got bio-enhanced, and maybe an alien or two, um, and became a, a mercenary team. And if you don't think a mercenary team can be fun and lovable and terrible, it is. It can be. It was good stuff. I, I particularly enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite teen books. I'll put it that way. The Solution was my favorite teen book. Freaks was pretty decent. Not great. And you can see Solution had breakthrough happen in issue four, as did Firearm. <clears throat> and I think Freaks didn't have their breakthrough scenario until issue six because I think it it got canceled a little early but it was still a pretty good book but it didn't run as long as like Manfred did it's got fire on number five solution number five firearm number six solution number six I never really understood the look on her face looks like she's biting her lip uh, Freak 7, Firearm 7, Solution 7. And there you go. Freaks had a like a pretty good run of just origin stories. And I they were kind of boring. I wasn't really into the origin stories because it's like we don't need an origin issue for every single character. And Solution started out kind of on Earth doing Earth shit and ended up way to hell off Earth doing really not Earth shit. But that's okay. Firearm gets tied in with one of the nastiest villains in the entire Malibu Ultraverse, which is uh, Rafferty. And he ends up getting his arm blown off and finishes out his series without an arm. Um, solution number 11 is a gorgeous cover. That is just a beautiful cover, by the way. As is number 10, but I do, I do think 11 beats it out. Now Freaks takes a big turn at issue 12, and I don't think it's a turn for the better. So I kind of lost interest in the series. It's, not, it's one of the weaker team books, in my opinion. Firearm 13, Solution 13. Freaks has their run in with Rafferty. Rafferty, whose goal is just to kill Ultras. And he is, I don't believe he has powers either. He's just amazingly good at, at what he does. And if anybody gets their ass beat a lot, it's Firearm, a lot. There's a nasty picture of Rune. There's a great cover of Rafferty himself. Just a schmarmy looking, Tony Stark looking guy who's capable of killing Ultras. Freaks number 18, Firearm number 17, and the very final issue of Solution, um, which was a really great series. I just have to say, again, it was a great series. Freaks, giant size. And Firearm, number 18, I believe that is the last issue. Now Firearm also, oddly enough, they made like a 25 minute Firearm movie. And you could send away and get it from the company for, I can't remember how much, but it was like a 25 minute movie. Probably really bad. I've always wanted to see it just to see what it was like. And it, that, this, knowing it's out there makes me happy. 
Um, Codename Firearm was a mini series that they cranked out, which doesn't look like it has a whole lot left to do with the original series, but it is what it is. It is from the company. It is firearm, so it's in there. Because I am trying to get every single issue of the Ultraverse I can. Now there was a few smaller titles that didn't run near as long. Prototype was one, which was kind of like their version of Ultraman. Sludge was one, which I don't even know what kind of comic book you would you would describe it as. Um, Rune was another one. Um, these all had terrible Barry Windsor Smith covers on them. I hate, hate them. But um, Hispanic guy, cocky, arrogant. He was your Iron Man character. Sludge was a dirty cop who got turned into a pile of goop over some drugs. And Rune was an ever-living, blood-sucking, wait, let me, shit-sucking vampire. There we go. Sludge was always fighting drugs, drug dealers. Rune was always, I don't know, I, I read it once, but it really didn't leave a lasting impression with me. I really didn't like it. Mostly I don't like the art, which if anybody's watched some of my old comic book videos, I will bitch and complain. I'm not a big Barry Windsor Smith Rune fan, or Barry Windsor Smith fan at all. I just, I don't like his work. Everybody looks, you know, all shriveled. Um, prototype had his breakthrough happened in issue five. There's another beef jerky looking Barry Windsor Smith cover. <clears throat> Prototype didn't last terrible long. I want to say Sludge lasted, I think it was 13 issues. And I think Prototype lasted around the same amount of time. And he was always fighting one of the cooler villains, uh, Lord Pumpkin. I loved Lord Pumpkin. He made a lot of appearances on the cartoon show as well. Uh, Prototype had lame enemies, like t uh, this techno-looking samurai guy. I just thought it was lame. He was always fighting some other guy in a suit. And I just thought that was not, not the best thing to have your character fight all the time. You should give them something that's different than themselves. Instead of just like an evil... He's always fighting somebody in a suit. Just an evil guy in a suit. And I always thought that was kind of lame. Um, this turns into the new rune. This is after Marvel got a hold of him. Clearly because we have Venom in here. And no longer do we have Barry Windsor Smith covers. Prototype number 11. Sludge has an out of body experience. We are into the new era of Rune. Prototype number 12, Sludge 11. Rune number three of its second run. Prototype number 13, and that would be its final issue. Sludge number 12, I'm pretty sure was its last issue. And then you had Sludge Red Xmas. And I'm pretty sure that taps it out for the entire Sludge series. Um, there was a Lord Pumpkin miniseries, and I do have a few of those somewhere. So I have also, not that long ago, I did go through some Exile stuff. And Exiles has changed titles numerous times with different companies. So it's kind of odd. But the original Exiles ran for four issues in the Malibu universe. And that is them. That's all they had. And then um, they ran a weird series through Marvel. These are kind of out of sequence, but it featured heavily. It had the Juggernaut in it. There is the first issue. And this is what got me excited about the whole series. Look at that. Juggernaut leading a team of all things. You got Reaper in there and you got a bunch of people from the Ultra Force or the Ultraverse. I just thought that was fantastic. I was very excited about it. Issue number two. Got a couple of issue number fours where you get to see like Prime versus Juggernaut. That's always good stuff. Issue number five. 
And I'm pretty sure that's when they wrote Juggernaut out because they're like, we really need Juggernaut to be somewhere else in one of these like upstart um, Exiles Malibu comics books. So Reaper stayed pretty consistent in there. And then of course you had your Black September. Solitaire, I have the first issue somewhere, but I am missing a couple issues of this it seems like because I can't find them anywhere. Um, this was supposedly, I have not read it. I, I, I feel bad, I have not read it, but it was supposed to be one of the better written of the series, but I was just never into it. I could never get started. Um, by the time I got every issue of it, I was kind of over it, over the whole Ultraverse thing, period. So I have to say, I have never read this series. And now that I'm missing a few issues, it's kind of hard to really think about diving into it when you don't have them all. And now we've just got, we have Breakthrough itself, which is these two issues encompass every single character basically in the whole series. They're all battling on the moon. This is both issues one and two. If you didn't have this, you were screwed. I didn't have it till recently. Um, Witch Hunter, this is the last one I've ever purchased. Um, this one was extremely difficult to find. Uh, I, I, after all of the collecting I've done, I never even knew it was part of the series until just this year. So that was a book that I definitely had to locate. Had to pay a little extra to get it, but it was worth it. You got Phoenix Resurrection with variant colors or variant covers and variant stuff going on. So you got Wolverine with Prime going on there. You got Ultra Force Ultraverse Origins, which is more of a rare one for me to find. Um, there was a series crossover called God Wheel that featured a lot of Asgardian type stuff. And this was just before Marvel got their hands on all of it. But pretty interesting to me uh, to see all these Marvel characters in another company's books. Um, there's Lord Pumpkin. He had his own uh, single issue. Um, this one came out after they were bought out by Marvel. This was Foxfire. I have a few issues of Foxfire. Um, there was a series called Wraith, which honestly, it looked so bad. I mean, it looked like some sort of Image Comics ripoff thing. I never read any of them. And they just kind of filtered all over into my regular collection. And I'm just like, ugh, I just can't bring myself to like spend the time to really read all of these issues of Wraith. Uh, there's another copy of Sludge Red Xmas. Rune Silver Surfer. This is crazy combinations of, of characters. War Strike. There was another terrible Malibu comic book. Um, I would put it on the same thing as Wrath. Um, War Strike number seven. And these are books that I have never been able to complete out. Another one of those. Ultra Boris Prelude. This is right as they were joining up and crossing over with the Avengers. Elvin. Elvin, I think I have all issues of that there was. Um, there's another issue of God Wheel, zero and one, featuring Prime Evil. It's a pretty decent cover, actually. Um, Ultraverse Eliminator. This is another one that I just recently found out about. So I haven't read it. I don't know if it's any good. But it does cross over with Siren, so that's kind of cool. Keep them together. Just look at Wrath. Why would you read Wrath? It just doesn't it look like an image comic. Like this is some sort of Youngblood ripoff. It just doesn't do it for me. At all. And maybe I'm being a snob, but I just thought this comic looked like junk. And I suppose a lot of people think a lot of these Ultraverse comics look like junk. I was actually a big fan of a, a lot of them. The majority of them. Um, Year Zero, Death of the Squad. This is a comic that I wish I had all, uh, I think it was four issue series. 
It takes place before the Ultraverse was even started, and it's how his entire team gets murdered by enemy. It's pretty good. Uh, it's another copy of Breakthrough number one. Siren was a series that came out of the Ultraverse after Marvel Bottom. So I thought that was cool. I love the character design. Love her maroon outfit. I love this cover with the Juggernaut. Absolutely fantastic. Siren number three. Another issue of Phoenix Resurrection. These were kind of a mess. A big disgusting naked rune on there. Phoenix Resurrection. Ooh, you got Bishop hanging out with Prime. How weird. How weird is that? I've got another issue of Foxfire number one. Foxfire number two. Foxfire number three. I'm pretty sure that's all the issues of that they ever made. And then um, there is a Black September issue of Rune. These are hard to find. Very hard to find for what you want to pay for them. And then there was just an issue that was just Black September. And I did pick that up. And that is every issue of Ultraverse Malibu comics I have. I have painstakingly tried to make this even halfway organized. If you're an Ultraverse fan, I hope you liked the video. If you ever wondered just how big the Ultraverse was, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's every major title. Uh, most of the spin-offs and at least an issue or two of every single mini-series I can think of and a lot of one-shots. That's pretty much it. The, the scrapings of what's left to pick up is very small. There is a few more into the Marvel Comics era that I don't have that are very difficult to find. But this is the bulk of the actual Malibu Ultraverse stuff. So I hope you liked the video. Sorry it took so long, but thank you guys for watching. I will catch you guys later. Bye.